The story of Frecht begins with the 2008 gathering hosted by Aztec Metamorphosis and the Cherokee Park United Church anti-racism team at Cherokee Park United Church on the west side in St. Paul. The purpose of the two-day event was to provide advanced training for anti-racism facilitators. In 2009, an expanded organizing group took on the name FREC, Facilitating Racial Equity Collaborative. From the beginning, we understood FREC to be a learning community with conference attendees as our fellow learners. We need to resist those forces that divide us because if we are united, those systems cannot stand. I thank each and every one of you for your determination and perseverance. The change we seek is not easy, and we see the ugliness of the response when we begin to have an impact on damaging those awful social structures. Disruption has been going on for some time, fueling the insatiable appetite of empire and capitalism, which is why we have Standing Rock happening today. One of our Lakota panelists participants said, when I think about disruption, I think about the disruption brought by the settlers' way of life. Racism as usual. Right? That's what we're here today to talk about disrupting. And when we're talking about disrupting racism as usual, we need to be talking about far more than interrupting inappropriate jokes. We need to be talking about digging deep to the roots of a system that has been in place for 500 years. And as Arundhati Roy would say, deprive it of oxygen. We need to begin to open our eyes, all three of them. And we need to be awakened. Our spirit needs to be awakened to the realness of what is happening around us. They keep us confused and divided. That's all that stands between us and a better world, is that we are kept confused and divided. Because they can attack Standing Rock. Why? Because similar level of protest is not happening at the same time in Atlanta and San Diego and Portland, Maine. In my own journey on anti-racism, I've just really come to appreciate the importance of community and, and having a group of people that are committed to, uh, to these issues and to addressing white supremacy and power and privilege and, as the, and, and the ways that they interface on our, in our society. Just to be a human being here is opening my eyes to how much is underlying the race issue that we don't even address or know about. And in Minnesota, we don't really like to talk about race, and I see that this is actually changing a lot, which is really good. White culture and racism very subtly pervades um, the systems I work in, and I need new tools and new strategies and kind of reinvigorated sense of purpose to keep me focused and, and moving forward on my own journey of anti-racism. I, I feel like the space that this conference creates is a space for community building and networking and a sense of, I'm not in this alone. There are a lot of people in a lot of different institutions, a lot of different cities across the state that care about this. Specifically listening to Ricardo Levine Morales yesterday, um, all of the ways that we need to disrupt are intersected and something that he said that really stuck with me was, if we are all individually fighting for the same things, then we're doing it the wrong way um, because it's too siloed. And so I think when there's a space that's created for all of us with our individual passions to come together and really see how they align, I think it's powerful because then we can figure out um, how we can work together to really create larger change instead of just receive these Band-Aids that we keep getting. And there's still work to be done but there are a lot of allies. And so meeting new people and finding out how they're using this work is really exciting. I think it keeps me fresh in the conversation and I could take it to my students when they want to know where they can volunteer or where they can learn and grow. As a strong message and unity is a strong message. And when we start there with building relation and building relationships with each other, that is how we can enter in this conversation. 
so I, I guess if I have one word to describe what I've learned, I, I feel like I've just been enlightened, and I'm very, very grateful for that. I have learned that um, I'm not the only one who feels like this, and that it's normal to, as a white person, feel somewhat clumsy and incompetent <laughs> and overwhelmed and um, and also that it's not really that important how I feel. Mostly it's just important what I do. And so I'm trying to figure out what that is and how to make some kind of impact somewhere. I feel this way as an educator that any awareness that we can give around racism we disrupt because we create awareness. And awareness is uh, a road, a path to liberation from racism. When you realize at the core of your being that you are just as good, not better, but just as good as everybody else, and when you come to that realization, then there is that liberation and that sense of freedom. The struggle, the traumatizing struggle for liberation, when you are, have a vision of it, when you let go of that imposed um, disease of despair, that toxin, when you get rid yourself of that, the struggle is not only joyful, but it is restorative. It is restorative. I have been in this movement since I was 13 years old, and I do not burn out. It's not because I don't feel the pain and the anger. It's because I do not do despair. And powerful unity is never built around small ideas. Never built around small ideas. You can't march down the street with a broad coalition demanding what do we want to be beaten up 5% less by the cops. Nobody ever put their life on the line to integrate a lunch counter. They put their lives on the line for a vision of freedom within which integrating a life counter was a tactic.